So I want to tell you a little bit about Karen Jordan Williams, who I think will find um, you'll find all of you are can can find something out of tonight and can engage in conversation around this topic over 40 and higher. So Karen is, I think, if I would summarize it, she is somebody who really loves helping individuals achieve their goals, both professionally as well as personally. So Karen, you should know, has a list of certifications and qualifications as a uh, trainer, facilitator, and a learning leader and career coach. Everything you can imagine from um, DIS certified, Myers-Briggs, some of you may have heard of, certainly, but things like Achieve Global International. Um, and managing personal growth, a certified instructor in that. So there's a whole long list. She currently serves as system manager of learning and development for Cook County Health and Hospital System, and she's the moderator and team leader for career development ministry at her church, the Apostolic Church of God. Her background spans academic and corporate positions in teaching and training. She is another one who is constantly engaging, learning, and reinventing herself for the different challenges that come along in her professional life and her personal life as well. Challenges and opportunities, I might add. Karen, in talking with her and getting to know her, I think you will find she offers a genuine passion around helping people realize their potential. She is obviously a strong believer in human potential and continued growth. So she, as I said, is a perfect facilitator for tonight's topic, and I'm going to let her get started. Karen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to Hired and Over 40. I like to start with some personal affirmations. So if you would repeat after me. I have experience. I have experience. I have skills. I have, skills. I have, knowledge. I have knowledge. I have abilities. I, have abilities. I, am, employable. I am employable. I'm over 40 and hired. Again, welcome. Thank you for coming out. I know it's extremely cold, but it shows that you are dedicated and committed to lifelong learning, to come out to this networking event and learn a couple of tips or two, not only from me, but from the other participants. So with that, let's get started. The Career Transition Center was mentioned earlier. Laura is here to represent them. They offer over 300 programs. Some of those programs are virtual programs. They, help, they have helped over 6,000 employees or professionals like you and I. And their greatest asset, they have 50 job and career coaches that help people who are in transition, thinking about transitioning, or just want to continue lifelong learning so maybe they can get a promotion or a lateral move. And as mentioned, I'm a learning and development leader, and my connection with the Career Transition Center happened a couple of years ago when I was in transition. I had the great opportunity to participate in their retreat, finding work without losing heart. And after I participated in that two-day retreat, I said, I've got to volunteer. This is a great retreat. It helps others, it supports others. And that's how I got involved with the Career Transition Center. Today's agenda, take a look. We're going to have various career facts that talk about the current environment talk about what smart career management is, what it means, what you need to do. We're going to talk about handling ageism, what do you need to do. There will be some job search tips, some action items that you can take, and last but not least, 
some resources that you can use. Now, here is the first career fact. The average U.S. worker will change careers or jobs three to five times over a lifetime. Now, how many of you have changed three times? Let me see a show of hands. Four. Five. Okay, so we kind of fit in with that average. I've changed about three times, too. If we're going to change over a lifetime like this, we have to make sure that we have maximum satisfaction. Another career fact, 55% of the workforce will work past the age of 67. That's another reason why we need to make sure that we have maximum satisfaction. If we're working longer, we're switching to different jobs, we need to understand what is important to us. So I like to tell people that because you have experience, because you have skills, because you have knowledge and abilities, you need to think of yourself as you incorporated. You Inc. And in order to understand you, Inc., you have to start thinking about your values. To determine your career direction, the first thing that you need to do is identify what are your values. What does maximum satisfaction mean to you? What I'd like you to do is to take two minutes and identify your top five values. Now, if you want to make that list smaller on that matrix, just cross out the values that are not important, important to you. But I need you to come up with your top five values. Now, your top five values are important to you, Inc. That means that when you're negotiating, for a job offer, you can go back to those values and you don't have to speak in terms of values, but you know what is important to you. So as you're talking about benefits and things of that nature, you will know how to negotiate. For example, a couple of years ago, I was looking for a job and one of my requirements was I needed four weeks vacation. I had worked at a bank, had four weeks vacation, and that was important to me. Now, I didn't go in and say, my value is spending time with relatives and family, but I knew in the back of my mind what I did with those four weeks of vacation. So when it was time to negotiate for four weeks vacation and they did not want to give me four weeks vacation, they wanted to offer me a different job title that they felt, okay, it's a higher level. Who wouldn't want that? But guess what? Because I knew what was important to Karen Incorporated, I was able to get the four weeks vacation versus getting a job title that really didn't mean anything to me. So it's important that you look at your values and that you understand what they are because it leads to your maximum satisfaction. Now, the flip side, an organization wants you to provide maximum contribution. They want you to exceed performance expectations. They want you to exceed goals and object objectives. So guess what? You need to make sure that you know what you offer so that you can provide that maximum contribution. So again, take 60 seconds now that you're familiar with the matrix, and I need you to come up with your top five ways that you offer value to employers. Now that you know what value that you bring to an organization, again, you incorporate it, your maximum satisfaction, and the other side of that coin 
is your maximum contribution. That way, you have a successful performance partnership with an organization. In a search or any type of transition, thinking about transitioning, you need to know these things so that you know what's going to make you happy and then what's going to make that organization value you. How many of you have heard of transferable skills? These are critical. Take a look at the top 10 transferable skills. When you are in a transition or thinking about a transition, it is important that you understand what are my top three transferable skills. When you're looking at a position and you're trying to figure out how can I make sure that I am a good to great fit, you have to go back to those transferable skills. It's a part of reinventing yourself. As the market has changed over the past couple of years, it is critical that you understand that just because you did something for the past 10 years and maybe that job is obsolete, maybe they have changed the job description, but guess what? You're changing with it. You can take a look at your transferable skills and make sure that you can match what you have to offer to that new position that you're seeking or the new position that is available. So it's critical that you understand that these skills, they go across different industries, different jobs, different positions. It's important that you package that, you have it in your back pocket because you want to make sure as you start networking, as you start looking for new jobs, that you can easily be able to talk about the value that you bring and how you can transfer working in a team structure, how you can plan, organize, and prioritize work. So what I'd like you to do is just quickly circle your top three transferable skills. And what I'd like you to do is very quickly, whether you're here or you're streaming live, find a partner and I want you to pair and share. Share your top three transferable skills with someone that's next to you. Okay, thank you for participating in that activity. The gentleman that I spoke with said, I have a lot more than these three. Many of you may have multiple, you may have six, you may have all 10, but think about what are the skills that you enjoy using. Those should be part of your top three. Because when you're networking, when you're exchanging information, you won't be able to mention all 10 in some cases. So it's good to prioritize so that as you're looking, you can make sure for that maximum satisfaction that you are telling people what it is that you can bring to the table, what makes you happy, and how that can help them, how you can make a contribution. So that brings us to the value statement, and this is critical. When you're networking, when you're talking to other people, they need to know who you are, what you do, and what you can offer. So with the value statement, how do you serve? What is the relevant experience that you bring? What type of work are you pursuing? And last but not least, identifying additional connections. That is critical. So going back to how you serve, you talk about your background. You talk about your skills, your knowledge, your abilities, things that you bring to the table. That relevant experience, 
Where did you do some of that work? Did you do it in corporate America? Did you do it nonprofit? Did you volunteer for different organizations? The work that you're pursuing, what are the industries that you are targeting? And last but not least, what are some of the target organizations that you're looking or exploring possibilities? That is your value statement. At this particular point in time, we want to work on our value statement. When you're talking to people, you need to be able to have that 60 to 90 second commercial, who you are and what you can offer. That is your value statement. Again, it's helping you get to a better tomorrow because you're incorporating what makes you happy, what you have to offer, and then you are asking for additional connections so that you can get to that best fit position for you. So what I'd like you to do now is actually start to dra draft out, and we'll take it in sections. Let's start with how you serve. So start to think about, and you can go back to the transferable skills page, what are some skills that you offer that you want to highlight who you are and what you offer? And you can use this as an example. So take a look at your top three transferable skills. How can you put that, that you organize, you build, you plan, what is it that you do? Next, your relevant experience. Where did you become an expert or where did you get the experience? What type of organization, what type of industry, what type of role? And again, we're just drafting you will want to fine-tune it. <clears throat> Next, the type of work that you are pursuing. Think about the target industries for the type, type of work that you do, or the target industries, places that you always wanted to work. For example, I always wanted to work for Starbucks. That's one of my, my target organizations. So of course, maybe Caribou Coffee, Dunkin' Donuts. I could get positions there. And by the way, I did start out in food and beverage with craft. Last but not least, and this is key, talk about some of those organizations. Like I mentioned Starbucks. Talk about some of those places that you are targeting and then ask people, who would you suggest that I talk to to get more information? Or who do you know that works there in human resources, or that hires people to do the type of work that I do. Those are always ways that you can actually build your networking, your professional contacts, and get to the hiring manager. Also, this value statement should be right at the top of your resume. It is your career summary, your career profile, but it gives a summary of who you are and what you offer to an organization. So again, pair and share. I'd like you to take what you currently have, and again, you'll, you'll want to refine this after tonight's session, but take what you have and share it with another person next to you. 
Another career fact. Getting your message out. You just created your message, but you have to get it out. If you keep it to yourself, you won't get to that dream job. So getting your message out about who you are and what you offer determines your success in job search. Now, when I attended Bradley University after my freshman year, I went back home. I was there for maybe two weeks. My father got the phone bill and he said, if you're talking to all of your friends across the country, you need to get a job. I was like, oh my. And I, I won't date myself, but it was a long time ago. I'll just give you a hint, in the 80s. So I said, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I need a job because I've made all of these wonderful friends and they live across the country. So I said, let me go talk to some of my friends who currently have jobs. So at 18, and I didn't really have a job that I had to look for before. I had jobs with the school district because my parents were educators. So I went to two or three of my girlfriends that had part-time jobs and said, hey, my dad says I need to get a job. This is what I have done in high school. So will you help me? A couple of days later, I had a job. I got my message out, OK? So way back then, before networking became very popular, it still was about not so much what you know, it's who you know. So I went to friends that had part-time positions, and I got me a part-time position so I could talk to my friends who were all across the country. Now, you have family members, you have friends, you have professional contacts, past and present, and as you continue, you will meet additional professional contacts. Those people will help you get your message out. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Because we are over 40, there are some challenges. And there's some challenges with younger workers under 40. Take a look at some of the negative stereotypes. Look familiar. <laughs> What we need to do is turn these around to positives. If people feel that we're overqualified and overpriced, no, we bring experience. We can hit the ground running. We have worked on similar projects, so guess what? We have that experience, that knowledge to pull from, and we can get things done a lot faster. When people talk about inflexible, feel superior to younger peers, no, we can mentor them. We can be a resource, a go-to person because of our experience. So as you take a look at some of these examples of what people may say this is a disadvantage, we turn it around. And not just say that you could be a mentor. Think about the time where you were an informal mentor or a go-to person that you can use when you're talking to people so that they truly do know that you can use that as an experience and you've done it before and you will do it again. So take a look at some of the positive stereotypes, whether it's younger or older. And if you think about it, 
These are just positive attributes. Just because you're older doesn't mean that you're not technology savvy or networking savvy. Doesn't mean you're not creative. Doesn't mean that you're not a fast learner. And just because someone is younger doesn't mean that they don't have certain experiences that maybe you don't have. Doesn't mean that they're not mature or stable. So what I'd like you to do is to circle your top five attributes. And as you are networking and talking to people about your career, make sure you have a story to tell as it relates to what it is that you can offer, being over 40 and employable. A few more positive age attributes. And what I'd like you to do after the session is to go back, I think it's page five to your value statement, and make sure you add some of these attributes into your value statement. Not only can you plan, organize, prioritize, but guess what, you're reliable. You have over 10 years experience. You mentor, you develop other people. So you want to make that a part of your value statement, who you are and what you bring to the table. Now, here's another career fact. 75% of all job seekers, they're always online, applying online. But the fact is, only 25% of the jobs are online. What's wrong with that picture? Most of the jobs are what we call the hidden job market. The only way you can get to the hidden job market is through getting your message out. Part of your value statement, getting additional connections, leveraging the contacts that you have, and continuing to get additional contacts. You have to network, network, network. That's the way that you get doors open. It doesn't mean that you don't apply online. It means you apply online, you go to LinkedIn, and then when you get to LinkedIn, you do a search on the company and see how you're connected to that organization that you apply to. And then you start networking with the people you're connected to to get your foot in the door. Now, I mentioned Starbucks is a target company of mine. But let's say I'm networking, and I mentioned Starbucks. I applied, but I don't have any contacts. But somebody that I talk to may say, I don't have any Starbucks contacts, but guess what? I know someone who works for Caribou Coffee. Let me give you their information. I'm still getting closer to getting in the industry that I want to get to and getting to someone who can hire me to do the type of work that I do. So some networking tips. Establish relationships with those who can refer or hire you. Use informational interviews to get to the hiring manager. Always follow up. Send your thank you notes. Email, I prefer handwritten. It really makes a statement. Another thing, always try to link in via LinkedIn. And it's great when you know something about the person that you're networking with and you can send them an article relevant to the profession, what you talked about, the industry, and things of that nature. Going back to that, using informational interviews, you can explore 
different career options. You can explore different industries that you never considered. You can learn about experts in your profession. You can learn how someone made their transition, leveraging their, trans their transferable skills into a position that maybe you have an interest in. So it helps you learn, explore, et cetera. 21st century employment. By 2020, 67% of all of the jobs here in Illinois will require a college education. So it's critical that we, we become lifelong learners. We continue to gain, acquire that knowledge. We continue to get certifications, license. We keep up with current trends for our various industries that we have an interest in or our profession. Here are some areas of opportunity. Healthcare, high tech, manufacturing, transportation, logistics and distribution, information technology, hospitality and culinary arts. So what I'd like you to do is just briefly put down a company or an organization next to each one of those industries that you may want to target, start looking at tonight or tomorrow. You have your value statement. You'll refine it, get it to the place you want it to be. You'll go back, add some of those attributes to your value statement, and now you have five target companies that you can use as you're getting your message out. Now, here are some to-dos, some action items. Smart job search. You want to do an inventory of your skills, knowledge, and strengths. You want to research feasible opportunities. You want to develop your compelling case. You want to use networking to make connections. We already started looking at your skills. Continue to do that. I said pick your top three transferable skills. There may be other things that you want to add to that. Remember, it's about you, Inc. It helps you develop your compelling case. So really take some time to focus on that. We already talked about a few opportunities that you can start to look into. You may want to list other competitors that are part of the healthcare industry. You may have put down Northwestern, but as you go back and reflect on where the opportunities are, I might as well look at University of Chicago or Cook County Health and Hospital System. So again, here are some to-dos for you. Some resources. There are websites. And one of my favorite, ONET. It gives you a wealth of information. You can stay on there for hours, search on different job titles, and it gives you the skills, the knowledge. It gives you a typical day in the life of that type of work. It gives you salary information. It's really a great tool. If you're not really sure, and you're exploring different career options, you can put in your top three transferable skills and a few more of those skills and then do a search and it will tell you different job titles or positions to look into. Professional associations, whether you're in human resources, information technology, finance, there are professional associations that deal with your profession and or your trade. Look into joining those. Even if you don't want to be an ap active chapter member, become a general member. Go to some of their networking events. Networking groups such as job clubs, job search groups, it's critical to do that. And of course, the Career Transition Center, places like that where you can get a coach 
that can help launch and help you manage your search, your transition, or just honing in on what your skills are, what you want to do, and where you want to go. At this time, I would just like to thank you again for coming out. And I want to leave you with a few things to keep in mind over 40 and higher. Number one, you want to update your resume. You want to take off any information that can tell your age. You only need 10 to 15 years of experience on your resume. You'll tell your story when you get there. You'll show your employment history when you fill out that online application. Your resume is just a highlight of your career. The next thing, you want to network. Get your message out. Your family, your friends, your professional connections from the past, your present professional connections. Leverage your spouse, significant others, their contacts, whether family, friends, or professional associations. You want to make sure that you're technology savvy. That is a must. Number four, you want to keep up with current trends as it relates to your industry, target industries. You want to keep up with current trends as it relates to your profession and or trade. You want to get those licenses, those certifications, and things of that nature. And last but not least, because we are over 40, we want to make sure that we're keeping up with the trends. We don't want, want to be too fashionable, but we don't want a look or clothes or things that will date us. So again, thank you very much. And now we're open for questions. And as mentioned earlier, step up to the mic, or you can go over to Kimberly. I don't know if this is OK. Regarding the requesting a uh, informational interview, everybody's working, everybody's busy. What's the best way to approach someone and request time for informational interview? The question was, how do you really go about requesting an informational interview? Well, number one, you don't want to say, I'm looking for a job, or I want to talk to you about the opportunities at your organization. What you want to do is, number one, if you were not referred by another person, you want to make sure that you know enough about their organization or enough about that individual to spark an interest. People love to talk about themselves. People love to talk about what they're doing. So if you didn't get a personal referral, you're going to mention, this happened in the news. I would like to talk to you more about A, B, and C. So that's all that you really need to do, whether you email them, whether you call them. Now, most people want to help others. Some people will say no, but you have to be persistent. You have to continue to call until you get that person that will take the time, whether it's over the telephone or whether it's face to face. My recommendation, go face to face. You want to show up, be very professional, and make that connection with that individual. If it's a referral, a personal referral, someone said call someone or email someone, you make mention of that when you connect with that person, whether by email or telephone. You let them know that Karen Williams wanted me to give you a call so that we could possibly have a 20-minute face-to-face -face conversation over coffee, lunch, after work, whatever. Did that answer your question? What other questions do you have? What about a networking events themselves? Like what do you, how do you give the best representation when just walking up to perfect strangers? Okay, the question was, when you are attending a networking function, how do you make the most of that? How do you just walk up to a stranger? Well, first of all, when you're attending a networking event, 
you know what type it is, if it's industry specific, if it's alumni association. So before you go, you have a game plan in mind on what is your opening line going to be. The key to remember at a networking event is it's not an opportunity for you to really sit down and talk about all of your skills, all of your target companies. It's to make a connection and set up a time to have coffee or lunch at a later date. So let's say there's a presentation that happens before the actual networking. As people are introducing themselves, you're taking notes on who you want to target after the presentation is over. If it's just an open forum, you already know that most people are here because it's alumni or it's industry, related to a certain industry. If it's related to a certain industry, you want to walk up to people, talk about what's currently going on in the industry, and then ask about them. They'll give you their value statement or their 30-second commercial, and then you'll exchange, but the key is to get their contact information and leverage an opportunity to actually meet with them at a later date. Because when you're at that networking event, you want to get as many cards, make as many contacts as possible, because once you start to follow up with the people from that event, you never know what or who it's going to lead you to. Did that answer your question? I think you had a question. Yep, I'm gonna get to you in just one second, but Karen, we have a question from online. Oh, okay. Uh, when talking about the value statement, you mentioned that this should pr uh, be at the top of your resume. Can you please give some examples? Like, for example, were you referring to just the how you serve statement or all four parts of the value statement incorporated in the top of your resume? Okay, going back to the value statement, at the very top, talking about how you serve, that's where you put your skills and your attributes. Typically, I tell people to look for or focus on three skills and three attributes. That definitely goes into your career summary or your career profile. The next part that talks about your experience that you were a learning and development leader for Fortune 100 companies, you still want to put that right there as part of your career summary or your career profile, where you got all of that valuable experience. If you have any certifications or an advanced degree that is important for that, you want to use keywords for your profession and for your industry. The part that you leave off is when it gets into preferred industries or preferred target organizations. You can talk about the types of industries that you have experience. Like I said, I started in food service, worked financial services, worked for a waste management company, and now I'm working for a health system. You can mention that you have diverse experience in different industries so that as you are targeting other industries, they'll see that you have been flexible in that area. But you don't want to put any target companies in your career profile or career summary. Did that answer the question? Okay, and now we have. My, my question is uh, for an informational interview where you're getting information. How important is it to know where you want to go. In other words, if you're exploring a field, you almost by definition, you, you're still learning and exploring, but how much do you have to know going into it? The question was, when you are participating in an informational interview, how much really research do you need to do? Because you're in, a, in an exploratory mode, well still, even though you're exploring an opportunity with that person representing that industry, 
you still have to have a rationale and explanation for why you're exploring that particular industry. You're not going to know everything about it, but you have to be able to speak intelligently to that industry. So you need to do a little research before you go to your informational interview. Did that answer your question? And that really helps the person that you're talking to understand that, hey, this person is hungry. They've done some research. So guess what? If I don't have a position for this person, I'm going to refer this person on to other people because this person did their homework, they knew something about the organization, the industry, and me. I want to introduce this person to someone else. And that's what you have to think in, think in terms of with informational interviews, that it's not just about that one person that you're meeting with. You're trying to meet with other people so that you can eventually get to the hiring manager that can hire you to do your dream job in your preferred industry. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I've just ended a 23-year career in um, a manufacturing industry. And I'm in school now to get a bachelor's degree in human services and going on for social work. I have, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> like, what do I do as, as far as my resume? Because my resume has IT information, things like that. But I, have, I haven't had any experience in human services or show, social work so far to put on there. So I'm thinking maybe should I do a lot of volunteering and internships and then put that on the resume. Okay, to kind of paraphrase the question and stop me if I'm going away from your original question. When you have been in a certain industry, in a certain position for a number of years, and you are making a transition, you're getting the education, but you're transitioning to a different position in a different industry, how do you make that happen? First, going back to those transferable skills. You have to think about what did you do in that manufacturing, and I've worked in manufacturing too, Ryerson still. You have to think about those transferable skills. What are they? And not only just your transferable skills, but also what is it that you like to do that's related to the position in human services? And those are the skills that you want to leverage. And you want to be able to speak to how you use the skills in your manufacturing position, how you've learned cer certain things in school, and how that's going to apply or help you in that human services role. You mentioned something about how do you put that on the resume. I will be honest, most human resources professionals, and a lot of times we vet the resumes first, we prefer functional or chronological resumes over functional resumes. That chronological resume shows us what you've done from your past up to your current position. The functional resume takes transferable skills, different competencies, and put your accomplishments by those different skill sets. When you're making that type of transition, it is good when you can use that functional resume. But I do have to warn you that when you do that, you identify those top three or four skills in that functional resume format because you're just focusing on the accomplishments that you have made within those different skill areas, there may be people who still want you to do the chronological resume because it shows progression. Still, you take that chronological resume and you highlight those transferable skills, but you talk about it in a way that relates to something that's going to help you show that you were doing human services work 
but it was just in a different industry. For example, as a customer service supervisor at Allstate Insurance, I was not in learning and development. But guess what? When it came time for me to interview for a training and development position, I talked about how I trained my customer service reps. I talked about how I created policies and procedures and put them in a book that spoke to the instructional design piece. So you're just leveraging. It really goes back to leveraging those transferable skills. Did that answer your question? All right, we're going to take one more question. You guys fight it out. <laughs> yep. You talked about um, the preference for chronological resumes. However, when you're over 40, the chronological resume will indicate your age when you begin to show the number of years that you've put into the workforce. So help us with that. Okay. The question was, I mentioned that a lot of HR professionals, they, human resources professionals, prefer the chronological resume. However, we're over 40. And if we put all of our career experience on that resume, they're going to see, Karen graduated in 1984 from college, okay. You don't put everything on your resume. You put the last 10 to 15 years when you're doing your career summary, you don't put over 25 years of experience. You put over 10 years. You may have 25 years, but it's still over 10. And you only focus on the past 10 to 15 years of experience. You take off any dates related to your education. You just put down the degree, put down the university, but you don't put down the date. The only difference is, if you are a recent college graduate, you can put that up towards the top of your resume and you can use the date then. But you take off any dates that will aid you. Now some people will come back and say, well when I'm doing the application and they want my entire employment history, they're going to see that. Well I know that there are some applicant tracking systems that are getting around where they hide that from like the hiring manager and things of that nature. But we're talking about the first thing that they see, the marketing tool, that's your resume. So just make sure that that focuses on the 10 to 15 year career span. Did that answer your question? For instance, I've had the past 10 years I've been in the public sector. However, prior to that I had like 20 years in the private sector. And I want to go back to the private sector and I want to incorporate the things that I've learned, um, I've, that I learned in the private sector, but that wasn't in the past 10 years. I've been in the public sector for the past 10 years, so it's difficult to incorporate all that information when I've been out of, you, you know what I mean? At the, the, the question was, what happens when you have been in the private sector for 10 years, but maybe you want to go back to the public sector that you did 15 years ago or vice versa? What you do after your career profile, your career summary, you put selected accomplishments. And you can pull your accomplishments from 25 years ago. It's just talking about what action you took, what results you took as it related to a project, a task, or things of that nature. It's an accomplishment. Then when you get to the end of your 10-year experience, just put other relevant experience. List the company and the position, but don't put the date. So they'll see she has experience, but there's no date. Other relevant experience, company, city, and the job title. Did that answer your question? Yes. Thank you again. I have enjoyed myself tonight. Hopefully you have too.
bundle up. Keep warm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Karen so much. Give her a big, big hand. Big hand. Come on, do it. Thank you so much for coming out tonight in the cold. I just want to let you guys know we've got about 22 people in this room. We had just over 30 people viewing online, and we had people viewing at all of our other campuses. What an awesome opportunity to unite the NLU Alumni Association, to invite friends to join us here at NLU this evening. And I just want to thank you so much for helping make this an event, event a huge success. So another big round of applause, please. So my name is Kimberly Michelson. I'm the director of the Alumni Association here at National Lewis University. And this event is the second in a four-part series that we have joined forces with the Career Transition Center. One more hand for Laura Circle. So I encourage you to currently mark your calendars right now for the next event, which will be all about networking. And that event will occur on March 25th. That will also be a Tuesday night, same time frame, same location, same opportunity to view online and at all of the different campus locations. And then we also have a final event, the grand finale on May 6th, and that will be called Hear It From The Pros, and we will have not only Career Transition Center here, but we will also have a panel of alumni speakers, people who graduated from National Lewis University who are gonna come here and share their experience. These are all free events. They are all open to all students, alumni, and guests of National Lewis University. So please take advantage of this amazing opportunity that we offer you. Finally, if you need more information about the NLU Alumni Association, you can go visit our alumni tab on the nl.edu webpage. You can pick up a couple of our um, alumni magazines here. You can update your contact information to get an e-reader version of these magazines. You can also, um, when you do that, that also gets you a copy of our monthly email newsletter that is just chock full of events of different things that occur on this campus and all of our other campuses that can help enrich and develop your professional life and keep you connected to NLU um, as an alum or as a student or maybe there's you want to stop and visit Dan and ask some questions about continuing your education here at NLU. Finally, Career Transition Center has a calendar. I want you to go to their website, the CTC website. It is right here. Mark it down. Register for free LinkedIn webinars. Uh, you don't need to be a CTC client to take advantage of these opportunities. For job seekers, they've got great ideas and great services, and the CTC people have been great to work with, so I want you to give them one final big hand. Thank you guys so much. My business cards are located where the beverages are. Please feel free to take one and keep in touch with me. I'd be happy to put you in touch with anything that you need. You guys go out and be safe, okay? Thanks. <laughs>